Hey folks, Kyle Keogh here with a new training video for you. In this video, which was taken this morning, you're going to see me do some reverse band box squats. I'm using a box that is right at about parallel. Uh, there are two reasons for that. Number one, it's convenience. It was a box that uh, I didn't really have to do much work to, uh, to use to set up, so I just used that box. But also because uh, anything past parallel, the last uh, inch to two inches of my, my free back squat, um, has, uh, has really been bothering my lower back, and more specifically my pelvis, um, <clears throat> which has been really stiff and really achy and isn't injured, but uh, is definitely overused and overtrained from a series of, uh, of incrementally uh, higher and higher intensity training sessions. And so um, uh, with, the, uh, with the box squats, uh, having that box as sort of like a stop, an isometric component, in the lift actually makes um, uh, the lift much more tolerable, and uh, it must there must be some sort of change in how force vectors are operating and uh, the extent to which my, my pelvis is or is not receiving a compressive force uh, using this particular movement, but I don't know how to explain it. I just know that it feels better, and so my first approach when I find that I consistently can't do a movement pain-free is to start looking at movement variations. And I felt like any freestanding squat, either front-loaded or back-loaded or in a high bar position, a low bar position, with or without reverse bands, with chains, without chains, I just felt like I wasn't going to be able to be successful training at a certain intensity with those squat variations. So I opted again to try the box squat, and that felt a lot better felt like I was able to stabilize my, my trunk a lot better. I felt also like I was able to engage my external rotators better than with a, uh, a regular standing back squat. And that helps me because I find that when I really focus on, and it doesn't look like that's the case because my knees are adducting slightly as I come up off the box, but I felt like when I was able to keep my external rotators, my glutes, my hip flexors, my, uh, my abductors, when I was able to keep those muscles really tight, it was taking a lot of the pressure off of my pelvis and off of my lower back, and it was relieve, relieving a lot of that discomfort, so I wasn't feeling it when I was sitting down onto the box. And um, I also use reverse bands. Uh, my plan was to use reverse bands that took off around 100, if not a little bit more, at the bottom. These took off uh, like nothing at the top, maybe a little bit for the top sets, but you can still see the bands look pretty loose at the top. Um, and they only took off 75 at the bottom. And I didn't know that originally because I didn't want to measure it before I started squatting. What I do when I do that is I set a number in mind and I wanted to be left in the dark on that because I was really just going to auto-regulate for this session and I was capping it at about an RPE 7, RPE 8, maybe. I was looking for a set in which the bar speed started to slow down for a top set. When I come back from uh, some sort of overuse injury, uh, especially for my squat, uh, in the past I've successfully run uh, this like Thompson-style progression, which is coined from Donnie Thompson, who would use it for his uh, squat training sessions, and I, I picked it up from Mark Bell, but... The basic premise is that you do five closely clustered together sets. Uh, this, the set count could, could, it could be five, it could be six, it could be four, it could be whatever, but they're pretty closely clustered together within 5% or so. And you work up at even intervals, and basically uh, you work up to a reasonably high RPE set, but the bulk of the work that you do is at a low exertion level. And for me, it works well coming back from an injury because I'm able to test the waters very slowly and accumulate fatigue, and accumulating that fatigue actually prevents me from working up to a really high and heavy top set, because again, I'm already fatigued, so it's a way of keeping me from becoming my own worst enemy. Finish with some speed work, because speed work is, it's not something that I, I normally program into my training anymore, because it's not something I feel I need, but uh, it's something that I can do pain-free, so I'm going to do it right now while I can do it. Anyway, it was a great training session today, great atmosphere. A lifter that I worked with pulled 600, which was three times body weight for him on his birthday. So congratulations, Andy. Great training session. Was happy to start making progress again. Keep checking in. I will have more videos for you very soon.